Today we're going to be using the new Creality Falcon 2 40 watt laser cutter and engraver to make up a mini RTX computer case for my Turing Part 2. I've previously made up a case for it out of clear acrylic, but I've recently seen a number of really cool looking designs for computer cases that incorporate wood panels. My previous case was made up of 3mm sheets of acrylic, which I could just swap out for 3mm plywood, but I want to improve on the design and make it look a bit more professional. So I used Fusion 360 to design a frame to hold the plywood panels. This frame would better finish off the corners and edges of the case, and I think the two-tone contrast between the black plastic components and some walnut wood panels will look quite good. The frame is primarily made up of four 3D printed corner pieces and four side panels. These will then screw together to form the main shape of the case and to hold the plywood panels. I've kept the same three fan and power button layout at the front, but I've redesigned this to add to the aesthetic. I'd like the side panel to still have some visibility into the case to see the blinking lights on the Turing Power board, so I've added the small cutout on the side to match the design for the fan cutouts. I've then also added vents and ports onto the back and top panels. With the design done, it's time to get the parts made up, and for that we've got the Creality Falcon 2. The Falcon 2 is an open gantry style laser from Creality, with a new powerful 40 watt diode laser module. It's also got some other interesting features that differentiate it from other similarly powered lasers, which we'll take a look at while using it. It comes with a pre-assembled frame, so it's almost ready to run when you take it out of the box. This is the first I've seen of this style laser that comes like this. Most of them require a bit of assembly first. The frame is also a full custom aluminium design. It isn't made up of sections of V-slot extrusion, so it looks a bit more modern and professional. It also hides the motors and provides well thought out cable management. They've also got good finishing touches on it, like movable and extendable feet which give you more flexibility on your work surface and with what materials you're able to use. One of the unique features of the Falcon 240W is the adjustable laser beam. If you're familiar with laser diodes, then you may know that the more powerful modules are made up by combining the light from multiple small laser diodes. This one actually has 8 diodes. This results in a more powerful laser beam, but the drawback is that it also slightly increases the laser spot size meaning that more material is cut away with each pass, and you get slightly reduced resolution when engraving. The Falcon 240 Watt accounts for this by allowing two modes, a normal mode, which is the more powerful mode with a larger spot size, and then a precise mode, which has less power but also a smaller spot size. The smaller spot size means you're cutting less material away, so your cuts are more dimensionally accurate. So in my design, I'm going to do some engraving on the large main panel to make use of both of these modes. I started by 3D printing the frame components on my Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. I need four corner pieces and four side panels. They're all the same, so it's easy to print on repeat or to fill the bed with. To hold the three fans in place on the front, we'll also need to print a fan holder. While those are printing, let's get the plywood panels made up on the Falcon 2. I opened the main side panel up in Inkscape to add some details to engrave. I've added the Turing Part 2 name at the bottom, and a design to label each of the four nodes by their assigned IP address. I'm going to be using a walnut finish plywood, which I'll varnish at the end for a rich satin colour to contrast the black 3D printed parts. Let's engrave and cut the large main panel first. In normal mode, they claim that you can cut up to 20mm wood, 30mm black acrylic, and up to 0.15mm stainless steel sheets, all in a single pass. I tried cutting a piece of 12mm thick solid pine, and it managed to get through that in a single pass without any issues. The cut was really clean as well. This is only 3mm walnut plywood, which is a slightly harder wood than regular plywood, but shouldn't be any trouble for the 40 watt laser, even at a bit of speed. The Falcon 2 also includes an integrated air assist system, which uses an external compressor to supply air through to the nozzle around the laser head. This gives it much cleaner cuts and keeps the lens clean. We'll start off with the engraving first. To do this, we'll first turn off the air assist and then set the laser to precise mode. As far as safety goes, the Falcon 2 has a couple of integrated safety features. The kit comes with a pair of safety glasses, but I always suggest that you get a proper set of certified safety glasses if you're going to be working with open style lasers like this, or better yet, fully enclose it. 
The Falcon 2 does have airflow monitoring, lens monitoring and flame monitoring. It'll also stop if it's bumped or tilted, it has an e-stop on the controller and has limit switches on all travel limits. Next we can turn the air assist back on and set the laser back to normal to cut the panel in the center window out. As with all of these open style gantry lasers, they produce a lot of smoke when cutting, so you'll need to work in a well ventilated area or get an enclosure for it. Creality sell an enclosure for the Falcon 2 with an integrated extraction fan and a length of flexible ducting. The first panels come out really well. I'm excited to see how these panels will fit into the 3D printed parts and come together to form the complete case. Next let's cut the remaining panels and corner filler pieces. I'm really happy with how these have all turned out. The cut quality is really clean with the integrated air assist system. Now we can finish them off with a coat of satin varnish. I don't want them to be glossy, I like a satin or matte finish, but varnish helps to bring out the natural colour of the wood and protect it from dirt and fingerprints. The 3D printed parts need a little bit of work before they're ready to assemble. I have already removed the supports on the corner pieces, but now we need to add some brass inserts to screw them together. I'm using two different size brass inserts. Each corner has four M2.5 inserts to hold the adjacent side pieces in place, and two M3 inserts which will hold the main plywood panels in place. These inserts are just melted into place using a soldering iron. We need to be a little bit careful with the M2.5 ones as they need to go in at a 45 degree angle. Now that we got the pieces all made up, let's put the frame together. Each 3D printed side is held in place on the corner piece with four M2.5 screws, two on each side. These are all M2.5 by 6mm screws, except in the front where we'll use 12mm screws to go through the fan holder as well. Before we screw the fan holder into place, let's mount the three fans on it. I'm using 40mm 5V Noctua fans that are each 10mm thick. I chose Noctua fans because they're quiet and because I think the colour scheme will fit in well with the walnut panels. We need to use M3 screws and nuts to hold them in place. And we'll do it such that the heads of the screws are almost flush with the top of the fans. This allows the front plywood panel to sit really close to the surface of the fans. We can then mount the fan holder and side piece in place to complete the case frame. Now we can move on to mounting the Turing power and plywood panels. You'll notice that I don't have any screw holes on the sides and fillers to hold them in place. I didn't want to have a case with a large number of screws visible, so these are just going to be held in place with epoxy. The two main panels will still be removable with screws to allow easy access into the case. Let's mount the Turing Part 2 onto the main back panel. I'm going to do this with some M3 by 10mm brass standoffs, which are held in place with some M3 by 8mm button head screws. The Turing Part 2 is then held in position with some M3 nuts. Each main panel is held on the frame with four M3 by 8 mm button head screws. To keep the case a bit more closed up and protected, I'm going to add a clear acrylic insert into the cutout. Being a diode laser, the Falcon 2 can't cut clear acrylic, but an alternative would be to just stick a 1 or 2 mm thick square of acrylic onto the inside of the panel. It then won't be that visible and will still close up the cutout. We can then epoxy the side panels into place. I've added the main panels first, because there's some flexibility in the 3D printed parts. So the main panels will help square up the whole frame beforehand, so we're not gluing panels into place on a twisted frame. Lastly, we can epoxy the corner filler pieces into place. Now we just need to add the power supply module and port, then connect the fans up, and then add the power button to the front panel.
And that's the case complete. You obviously don't have to use black for the 3D printed parts, or use walnut plywood for the panels. By using different filaments and wood colours, there are unlimited design possibilities. Let me know which of these two designs you prefer in the comment section below. The Falcon 2 also supports offline control, or control without a connected computer but this is a bit different to some lasers that come with a display. This offline control mode just loads the most recent G-code file in the root directory, so it gives you a way to cut or engrave directly from the microSD card, but it is somewhat limited. That said, I did manage to use it to cut out this included design. If you don't yet have a laser cut or engraver, the Falcon 2 is a great all-rounder that has the power to cut thicker materials but can still retain the detail in engraving finer artwork and text as well. I use a laser in my workshop far more often than I ever thought I would. With a laser I can make up parts to build an enclosure or model in a few minutes, where similar parts would have taken hours to 3D print. If you'd like to get your own Creality Falcon 2 40 watt, they're currently available for $1,699 through their web store. With Creality, you're also buying from a company that has a great track record in quality and support with their 3D printers. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.